Hi, I'm Jacob. Uh, I'm the creative director at Pip Deck. So it wouldn't surprise you that my favorite deck is Brand Tactics. I think it's a must for any marketer, whether you're in branding or not. Um, I think it's for any entrepreneur as well, to be honest. I think just crack into this deck is it's absolutely amazing. And the author, Alex Smith, is a really exciting person in the marketing space. For me, my favorite sort of card is actually a recipe card. So they're slightly different than tactics. The idea of a recipe card is basically combining tactics that can solve like a, a slightly bigger problem than just an individual tactic can do. So my favorite recipe is the um, icon builder. And the problem that you're solving is um, creating like an elite, amazing brand. The first uh, tactic on the recipe is the philosopher tactic. And we use this to kind of uh, figure out these kind of big issues, like big existential issues that we wanted to help our customers solve. You know, that kind of helps us set kind of goals for the business really. And the next one is the look at me tactic. And this helps you understand what your brand says about the customers who use it. So Charles, who is our founder, he kind of considered this like right at the very beginning. And he wanted the decks to show off like how original and creative our customers are. That's why our decks are like really beautifully designed with bright, bold colors. They like put it out on a desk. Someone's going to come over and ask you like, what are these cards? And it's always makes for a great conversation. And fun fact is also why the decks are larger than your average kind of playing cards, because it just helps them be eye catching. And again, sort of show off to your coworkers. And then the next tactic in the recipe is the creative canvas. And that helped us kind of map all the opportunities we have to kind of express our vision, personality and humor as a company, like really sort of show the personality behind the business because we are a small business. We're a personal little team. We're not this like giant sort of shady corporation. Like we kind of want to show the human side basically. And the next one is the one stupid thing. And this card gets you to try to identify like what's the one part of your offering that your competitors would like never try. And that's what will make you stand out. So for us, I think it's the cartoon characters that we have on our decks because everyone thought the business had to be stoic and serious, like we're all in Mad Men or something. And like nobody had actually tried or, or dared to make business skills kind of look fun and silly and playful. But the fact that you're all here today and the business is still going shows that there is an audience who wants to have fun in their careers and who knows like the best way to learn is through play. That's why they're printed as a deck of playing cards too. Like it's literally playing cards. That's the kind of feeling you want to create and remind you that, you know, careers and work, it is meant to be fun and playful. And then finally, it's brand stretch. This helped us explore the wider potential of like offering at Pip Decks that isn't necessarily part of our core business. Like what are some of the other things that we can kind of explore that aren't just sort of decks of cards necessarily? Give you like a small example which is um, if you signed up to our emails, you'll notice on a Wednesday, we send an email called Pips Practical Prompts. It's a really short email. It's just three sort of useful sort of tidbits, little, little facts that we think would help people think a bit differently. But the thing is the advice in it is only sort of semi-related to the decks. You know, there'll be a kind of storytelling advice. There'll be a design advice or, or sales advice, something like that. But we don't really use the newsletter to promote the products. So from a sales perspective, it's not that useful. It's also really hard to right because it's got to be useful it's got to be practical and it's got to be short and those three things combined are like really difficult to do like every single week and the last thing we don't want to do is just kind of like fill up an inbox and just send generic platitudes of like just believing yourself like we want it to be practical we wanted to feel left field so sometime last year i stopped writing pitch practical prompts because i was like it's not directly related to our offering and i kind of figured out my time would be better placed elsewhere but then after like a week the number of panicked emails our customer service this rep's got being like, where's my pitch practical problems? I enjoyed reading those. They were like a bite-sized little five minute thing. Completely changed my opinion on it. And I just found realized that people just enjoyed getting these bite-sized nuggets of knowledge. And you know, they would apparently share them in meetings or like with their coworkers. And that sort of thing, I can't put on like my spreadsheets or my quarterly reports. I can't go to my boss and be like, look at me. Like, you know, it's not gonna make this like huge different on metrics. But the longer I'm in marketing, the more I realize that the best kinds of marketing is the kind that can't be tracked. And it you know, just improves that customer satisfaction. And that's kind of why I love brand tactics so much is because it's not about following the numbers, but it's about talking to your customers, using some like classic gut instincts and like just going out there and experimenting. So yeah.